Hey, hey, this is His Word Unveiled. Today we're reading this awesome story um, that really lets us in on um, how powerful it is to be in connection with the Lord, that nothing can come against us, nothing can stand against because He is victorious. And when we cling to Him, when we are connected with Him in relationship with our Almighty God, then He is our victory, that nothing can come at us and succeed. There may be pain and there may be hardships in life, but when these attacks come, we can stand firm, we can stand steady. And we see this in um, today's reading with David, just the steady, this steady, this control, this constant um, consistency of trusting the Lord, being in Him, and, and no matter what chaos, what attacks go on around, He's steady, He's taken care of, He's protected. So, with that, let's jump into our reading. First uh, Samuel chapter 18 will be our reading today. So go read, meet with the Lord. Let the Lord just speak and speak that power into you, just the power that nothing can stand against Him. And when we remain in Him, then nothing can stand against us because the Lord is our strength and the Lord is our hope. And He, um, he is the one who protects and provides and keeps us under the shadow of His wings. So... Um, go do that reading. First Samuel chapter 18, let Father speak. Let him just, let him have space to really come in and meet with you intimately. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for no matter how chaotic um, life gets, no matter how busy and crazy it seems, no matter how painful, how ugly, how dark, how hopeless it appears at times. Lord, we thank you for being our light. We thank you for being our hope. We thank you that when we are in connection with you, that that um, there is meaning and that there is a way. There's always a way. You always make a way. And that way is found in your presence. That way is found when we remain in you, when we remain focused and fixed and, and choosing choosing to be steadfast in you. Lord, thank you for being our way and our hope. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for blessing us. When we remain faithful to you and in you and in pursuing you, Father, you bless. And you are a faithful God who who speaks to us so gently, yet yet so boldly stating that that we will not we will not fall in you in your presence. We will not be knocked down no matter what we feel. We will not be knocked down and you will be our victory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being so faithful. Thank you for being so steady and your promises so sure. Thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us. Thank you, Father. We praise you. We ask that you meet with us here as we as we read, as we dig in, as you unveil yourself to us. May we see, may we hear, may we, um, may we bloom in you. In Jesus' name, amen. First Samuel chapter 18. Okay, our chapter before we just finished reading this um, that story of David and Goliath and hearing of just the power, the authority that David moved in. He had, he had every reason in the world to fear, to be afraid, and to flee the other way, but he didn't. And he spoke, hey, yo, no matter what weapons you have, no matter how strong you are, no matter how afraid everyone else is of you, I come in the name of the Lord. Therefore, I come in strength. I come in power. I come in victory. So we read that story last chapter. Um, we saw that Saul then asked David, okay, who are you? Very interested in David, seeing, hey, this kid, this kid's got something going on. There's something in him that, you know, the rest of my army and myself that we do not have. So he inquires of, you know, who you are, whose son are you? All of this showing interest. And then verse or chapter 18, that was that is our reading today. It says, now it came about when he had finished speaking to Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as himself. I love this. I love that they become soul brothers. I have a soul sister and, and it's when just your souls connect, your spirits connect, that there is something within that you're like, whoa, you know, this, like there is some kind of connection that's deeper than than others, that there's a lot of really good friendships, a lot of really good um, depth that we have maybe in connections with other people, but there's something about just having a soul sister or a soul brother um, where your souls really connect, where they're moving in the same direction, the moving just, you know, with the same passions and vision. And we see this incredible 
powerful just friendship then that begins forming and shaping between Saul's son Jonathan and David. I love this, that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as himself. So this real, this, this sincere, this, hey, there's something special with this friendship. And, and knowing that it will grow, knowing that God has something even greater in that relationship um, in store. So verse 2 says, Saul took him that day and did not let him return to his father's house. So he wanted him close. He acknowledged that, hey, this kid's got this kid's got guts. Like, he's got something going on. It's obvious that the Lord is with him. So Saul wanted him nearby. Verse 3 said, Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. So there's this friendship, this covenant saying, Hey, you know, we're in this for life. That there's something deeper in this that let's, let's cling together. Let's, let's, you know, let's remain together and close so that we can see what can come out of this. Understanding it's, it's this awareness that, Hey, there's a depth, there's a power in this that, that God can, <clears throat> God can use, that it can become something even greater. And just showing the honor in this, it says, Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David. So just the togetherness, just the brotherhood, just the, the power in that. Um, okay, it says, wherever David went, then he prospers. So we see this, him being honored, him being victorious, just everything he did, men were aware of. God saw that that he was being honored and respected. It said then um, in verse 6, it happened as they were coming when David returned from killing the Philistine, that women came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with joy, and with musical instruments. The women sang as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. So they are lifting David now above Saul. They're coming out to meet Saul. Saul's used to all this attention. Saul has won a lot of battles, a lot of wars. He has defeated a lot of these nations, and he is used to this, him being on top. Now we see and hear these women singing and dancing and singing, hey, Saul's done good, but David's done great. Saul has slain thousands, David has slain ten thousands, and it says in verse eight, and here's the here's where the line is drawn. Then Saul became very angry, for this saying displeased him, that he sees now that David is lifted higher than himself. Now David is getting more attention, that no one is seeing Saul as this great, as as being needed, as as you know high above, as as this honorable, respectful, like everyone goes to Saul, now he's feeling everyone pulling away from him and being drawn to David, that they are singing and dancing and this jealousy rises up in him. And we saw a chapter earlier that it said the spirit had left um, Saul through that disobeying and through the opportunity that God positioned him in and he chose disobedience. And he was told by Samuel that his kingdom will be torn from him. And now this jealousy is rising up where he knows that he's aware of that. It probably puts more of a striving and a desperation to get people to see him, notice him, like him. And now he sees that, oh yeah, people may like me, but not like me as much as they like David. And this jealousy, this comparing this, this, oh no, he's feeling out of control. And it says that he's angry, that this displeases him. He becomes very angry. In verse nine, it says, Saul looked at David with suspicion from that day on. Now it came about on the next day that an evil spirit from God came upon mightily upon Saul. And he raved in the midst of the house while David was playing the harp with his hand as usual. And a spear was in Saul's hand. Saul hurled the spear for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David escaped from his presence twice. Now Saul was afraid of David for the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. So we have this, that Saul is getting very angry. He's displeased with how everybody is looking at David more than himself. Again, this jealousy rising up within him. Um, it says that Saul looked at David with suspicion. So he's watching him. He is He's looking at him on with anger, um, hating him, jealous of him, um, wanting him destroyed, not wanting him to succeed because Saul feels like every time David succeeds that Saul is pushed down lower and lower. And it's making Saul feel like he's got to take control. He's losing control and he's got to do something about it. It says that one day, 
an evil spirit was upon him. He was just feeling discouraged, this anger. He was allowing his emotions to take over, to lead him, to, to run all of his decisions. He's, he's pacing, he's feeling frustrated, he's feeling angry, out of control. David is there as usual, playing the harp, trying to calm him, bringing this soothing just element, bringing, you know, ushering in just the, um, just the Lord and, and rest and wanting to calm this down. And, and Saul just allows his motions to take over and he takes his spear that was in his hand and he, he flings it at David in an attempt to pin him to the wall. He's so full of rage that he cannot control himself. He allows, he's dwelling on this anger so much that he allows it to run his decisions. And, and David then, it says he escapes. He escaped twice in his presence. So that Saul was at him, consistently at him, that this was a new normal now for Saul to, to look at him with suspicion, to respond in anger, and to try to kill David. He let his jealousy, he let this, this insecurity within himself to run his decisions. And in verse 12, like we read, now Saul was afraid of David. So he feared, he feared that this was the one that was gonna take his place. He saw that he was taking his place. And Saul, having his confidence in himself and the things that he was doing and how he was accomplishing and how he was winning, it was all on himself and his dependence on himself. So when he saw someone rise above himself, because his dependence has been upon himself, because it's been in his own strength, because his identity has been based off of what he could accomplish and how he could accomplish. His identity, his worth, he had based off of how other people viewed him. And because of that, when he sees someone doing greater things than himself, then he now feels worthless. He now feels insecure. He now feels fearful that he will be a nobody, that he will be just pushed aside, that he will be not seen, that, that there won't be anything worth anything within himself. And because of that, he's fearing. He's getting out of control. Because when our identity is based off of the things we do, rather than whose we are, that we are God's, that God loves us regardless, that we're not worth any more by the things we do, by the things we accomplish. Our worth is found in being God's, that's it. And Saul missed that. Saul put so much within himself and upon himself that now seeing someone that other people are paying more attention to, he just loses it. He absolutely loses it and, and he allows anger and, and this vengefulness and, and this bitterness and this jealousy and all this stuff to just consume and lead him to making horrible, horrible decisions and it causes him fear. He fears David because this is the man that's stripping him of him, his identity is what he's seeing. This is the man that's taking away his worth. This is the man that's going to just um, cause him to be just not seen and nobody just pushed aside and left for people to just walk and all over and not pay attention to that he feels like this is his this is his ruin like this is going to ruin him this will destroy him because he has placed what he's done as his worth he so missed it and we see this he's afraid of david for the lord was with david and not with saul and here's the thing when we reject the lord we turn away from the Lord, we're not trusting in the Lord, then when we see other people living for the Lord, it enrages us. Instead of encouraging them and seeing, hey, this is awesome. This person has it on. This I want what this person has. The, the steadiness, the control, the, the strength, like that, that's something that I want to attain. That's something that I want to figure out. I want to be around that person because of just the presence that they hold. Instead of that, we just get enraged because we don't have that because we're not doing as well as them. It's one or the other that we can choose. We can either either, you know, hang with them, be drawn to them, or we can hate them, be away and try to destroy them. And that's exactly what Saul is doing, trying to destroy David, throwing a spear at him, wanting him pinned up, wanting him gone. And this is all out of fear. It says now Saul was afraid of David. He was fearful. It's this bully mentality of when you don't feel good about yourself, then you treat other people horribly, especially those people who you are jealous of, who you see are the real deal, who are maybe popular and getting attention, does well with things, does well with people. That um, that bully mentality and that that is who Saul is allowing himself to become. He's allowing just the flesh to take over. And um, yes, and out of fear, 
treat David in this way. In verse 14, it says, David was prospering in all his ways for the Lord was with him. When Saul saw that he was prospering greatly, he dreaded him. So more and more fear came over him, which drove him more and more into anger, into this hate, into this vengefulness. Verse 16 said, but all Israel and Judah loved David. So it goes into just this respect that everyone saw David. They saw the steady man that he was. They saw the man of strength, the man of integrity, this, this calmness, this gentleness, yet just being empowered, being full of, of boldness. And people know, people see when, when others are real, when, when it's the real deal, when they have a connection, when the Lord is truly with them, when they're living a life for and in, in the Lord, people notice there's a difference that they are set apart that there's something about them that draws other people in okay then it starts talking about just Saul and Saul's um, thinking this through and how I can destroy David and this manipulation along with this vengeance of what's going on um, okay so um, Saul offers his oldest daughter to David because of all the victories that he is um, that he's done, how victorious he's been. And David said, "Who am I to be the son-in-law of the king?" Just in this humility, in this no, can't do it. So Saul gives his older daughter then to someone else. But then he starts thinking, "Okay, if I give my daughter to David, if he if he gets you know." overtaken by this woman and just in love, then it's going to distract him. And if he's going to start falling, he's going to start not being as successful. It says, verse 20, now Michal, Saul's daughter, loved David. When they told Saul, the thing was agreeable to him because um, he says in 21, I will give her to him that she may become a snare to him. So verse 22 says, then Saul commanded his servants, speak to David secretly saying, behold, the king delights in you and all his servants love you. Now, therefore become the king's son-in-law. So Saul's servant spoke these words to David, but David said, is it trivial in your sight to become the king's son-in-law since I am a poor man and lightly esteemed? So David said, I can't just take, you know, I can't just take your daughter. Like what, what do you want? What do you want from me? Like, this is not a trivial thing. This is a huge deal and I have nothing to give. So what can I give to the king for his daughter's hand in marriage? And then Saul said, um, the king does not desire any dowry except a hundred foreskins of the Philistines to take vengeance on the king's enemy. And here's why Saul said this. Saul set this entire thing up out of manipulation. And it says, now Saul planned to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. So though Saul saw that David was successful and I mean, he defeated Goliath, the one that everyone was afraid of. He said, okay, I'm going to plan this where he will fall at the hands of the Philistines that I'll set him in position in this place where he, he'll have to fall. Like it'll be an impossibility for him to win. So David says, what can I give the king to marry Michal, his daughter? So Saul says, just bring back a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. No biggie, no big deal. Just, you know, bring me back that and we'll, we'll bless you and we'll honor you and we'll let this thing happen. And Saul's just, you know, like thinking, oh, he's so, this is it. This is, this is my chance to destroy him. Um, so Dave, it said that this pleased David and it pleased David to become the king's son-in-law. So he's like, all right, let's do this. Verse 27 said, David rose up and went, he and his men, and struck down 200 men among the Philistines. Then David brought their foreskins and they gave them in full number to the king that he might become the king's son-in-law. So Saul gave him Michal, his daughter, for a wife. So he defeated him. He came back alive. All bummer for Saul. Then he gave him his daughter and he's like, okay, well, you know, she can still be a snare. She can still be a trap. This is going to get him to fall either way. Uh, verse 28 says, when Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David and that Michal, David's daughter, loved him, then Saul was even more afraid of David. Thus, Saul was David's enemy continually. So we see the steadiness in David. Nothing's knocking him down. He's just saying, okay, you want me to do that? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll rise up and I'll go because I know who fights for me. I know that the Lord is with me. David knew that. And because David lived knowing that truth, 
everyone else knew it as well. Everyone else knew that his power and strength came because the Lord was with David. And Saul saw this, and no matter what he tried to do, no matter what he planned and, and manipulated and, and having done to destroy David, David just remained stronger and stronger and more steady and, and more steady. And, and it said Saul knew. Saul knew the more positions he put him in, the more higher it elevated him because that's what happened. When we stick with the Lord, no matter how the enemy comes at us and chooses to knock us down, if we're with the Lord, when those things come at us, it's just an opportunity to be elevated, to be to be a part of the glory of God, to see the glory of God in our own lives coming to be, being established. We see ourselves being trained. We see ourselves put in position where we have more intimacy and connection with God, that it is more aware to those around us that the Lord is with us, that what we have is real, that what we have is full of strength and hope that nothing can knock us down because nothing can stand against the Lord. And it's so amazing seeing that the more and more Saul pushed in, the more and more Saul attacked, the more other people saw how great and strong God is and was in the life of David. May we see those attacks. May we welcome them. When, when things come and it's hard and it's uncomfortable and it's painful and we're faced with really, really hard stuff that we don't want to deal with, that we want to run and, and fear and run away instead, when we stand confidently and steady and the power of God, trusting him, knowing that God is for us, knowing that God is fighting for us, knowing that this is an opportunity for us, when we do that, oh my goodness, how, how we are drawn into the presence of God, how we are exposed to the goodness and strength of God, how blessings just pour out, blessings of protection and comfort. When, when that relationship with the Lord, that, that intensifies in the heat of the battle. That intensifies when those attacks come. May we welcome those. We see this. The more and more that the attacks pushed, the more and more people knew that the Lord was with him. The more honored he was, the more loved he was, um, he, he knew he was. That, that was the power in that, in, in remaining with the Lord and taking those moments of heat and seeing them as such a beautiful, intimate um, opportunity for us to be drawn into the Lord. It says, yes, then, then Saul was David's enemy continually. So more and more, the attacks didn't stop. Just because the Lord was with him didn't mean that his life was, it was just an easy road. It wasn't. And this is just the beginning of it, of, of how these attacks came at David. But, oh, we see, though, just the intimacy, just the, the steadiness and what that brings. So, so, so good. Uh, verse 30 this chapter ends with this verse. Then the commanders of the Philistines went out to battle, and it happened as often as they went out that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul. So his name was highly esteemed. Again, just the more and more that they came, the more he was lifted up, that he was lifted up on high in the power of the Lord, that the Lord was carrying him and seeing him through. That when we have a tendency of sitting back and saying, why is this happening? Why me? I don't like this. This isn't fun. This is hard. This is, you know, and we just want to sit and sulk. We need to be rising up and being like, all right, it's on. God wants us drawn into him this much. God is allowing us to see him in a, in a different way, in a more intimate way that we can, we can come face to face with the God of comfort in this situation that we can be highly esteemed. People pay attention. They're not, they're not watching how you act when everything goes well, when your life is, is full of all of this good stuff, this easy stuff. People aren't paying attention. When they, when they focus in on your life is when really bad things happen. People want to see how you respond. People want to see where your hope is, where your trust is, who you're depending on. That's, that's, when they, that's when they come in. That's when they're watching. That's when they won't take their eyes off of you. That's when they want to see something real. And we can show them what's real. We can show them the power of the Lord. We can show them that a life with Jesus is beautiful in the good and in the bad. That's where it's at. That's when our life can have an eternal impact. That's when people's lives can change can change just by watching the way we respond in the heat of the battle. When we choose to say, all right, God, I don't like this. This doesn't feel good. This, this is breaking my heart, but I'm trusting you. I'm believing that there's something beautiful in this that you want to show me, and this is for me. That's where it's at. All right, with that, I'm leaving you. Um, 
I'm leaving you with that truth, with that power. Love that. I'm so like the Lord just did a work in me reading through this. I pray that he did in you as well. Thanks so much for walking this out with me. Um, I hope to see you crazy soon on my next video. So just keep coming back. Keep watching these. Keep reading. More, most importantly, be, you know, beyond you watching these, keep reading. Let's keep sticking in, um, sticking with reading through the Word of God and letting Him unveil Himself to us. So thanks again for walking this out. Yeah, yeah. Hope to see you soon.